What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lure Building over here on Baker Builds. My name is Zach Baker and today, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, we are going to be building a topwater frog out of wood. Now I've made a couple of these and I'm really happy with the way they've turned out. I've actually already caught some fish on this bad boy right here. The only thing that we're going to be doing different to the frog that we're building today is adding in a little bit more belly weight. And I'll explain all of that later. Um, if you're wanting to build this frog for yourself, I'll have links below my website, or you can just search bakerbuildsusa.com. And I've got the pattern to the frog on there, so that way you can build your own. I printed this off directly from the website this morning to make sure that I had the exact pattern or version of the pattern that you guys will have available to you. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and we'll go ahead and jump right into building this bait. So we are starting off with a one inch by one inch piece of poplar, cutting out the pattern, and then I'm going to mark on the piece of wood how long the bait is, and then just using a little straight edge to give me a nice straight line for cutting it. After cutting it to shape, I'm going to use some spray glue to attach the pattern to the piece of wood, and then take her over to the belt sander. Now I've had a lot of people ask me about my tools and where I get them. My belt sander that I use almost for every single bait is from Harbor Freight and I think it's just under $50. And I'm running an 80 grit sandpaper belt on there. I've had this belt sander for over a year now and I've used it for, like I said, almost every single bait that I've made and it's been running like a champ. I couldn't complain about it. So all I'm doing is sanding down the sides of the bait to match the pattern and then we will be moving on to doing some more Dremel work later on. So this bait is made out of poplar, which is a really light wood and easy for carving, so I definitely recommend it if it's your first time building a bait. This is also a topwater bait, so we don't want any wood that's really dense or heavy. The lighter it is, the more easier it is going to float. So now that we got the frog sanded roughly to shape, we got the whole outside all sanded down to the shape of the pattern. What I like to do, that way I can make sure I can line up my eyes and where these uh, leg indentions are going to be at later. What I do is take the other side of the pattern and I just use a Zacto knife and cut that out a little back and I just scored the lines where the eye is. I didn't really hole punch that out. But what I do is I like to line that up right on there and then just take a pencil and draw where the lines are. Uh, but I definitely like to do the top half. I'll go ahead and do the bottom just so we have a good registration mark for later. And then taking uh, the back half and just drawing where that little line is. Also on these, what I like to do if I'm gonna be making a whole bunch of baits is I'll print it out on cardstock. That way it's a little bit more dense. And then as far as the eye goes, I just put a little dot. which uh, does not show up very well on the camera. But there we go. Little dot where the eye is. We've got both parts of the legs where those are going to be in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drill out these holes because we're gonna start doing some dremeling work and carving work next. And I like to drill out the eyes first thing. That way I don't sand them too far back and I have a good idea of how wide to do uh, some carving onto the bait. I like to use Forstner bits to drill out the eye sockets on my lures. They give a really nice, crisp, clean cut on them. And you can pick these up at Harbor Freight for fairly cheap. That's where I got my kit from and they seem to be doing pretty well so far. I know that the eyes I'm going to be putting in here are glass eyes, so they're a lot thicker than the normal ones I'll put on my other baits. So I'm gonna drill a fairly deep hole into them. So before we start doing any dremeling work, I wanted to explain this for anyone that might be uh, extremely new to wood carving. 
I know there's a lot of uh, younger kids that have been asking me questions on TikTok and on YouTube on uh, tips for beginners. So here's what I like to do. We've got the furthest part that's going to be sticking out and I don't know how well this is showing up on camera. Uh, but you can see how this bottom leg right here is sticking out further. And then same with a little bit in the back. I think on this one I might end up sanding most of that away on accident. But basically we're going to be taking down material this direction and leaving this leg stand out. So we're going to be carving away basically from here. If you can picture this whole chunk of wood cut out. All of this right here. We're going to be saying all that just straight down. And I like to use the Dremel tool to do that. So I don't know if that's making sense. I'll, sh I'll be doing it on camera here in a second, and hopefully that will help explain it a little bit more. I'm using the Dremel tool for this. You could use a, you could hand carve it. I just like the Dremel because it's a lot quicker. Uh, by, but for sure, if you have more patience than I do, you, you can most definitely use just a carving knife or a Zack knife or something like that to carve this. But let's go ahead and get into Dremel. With just a little bit of dremeling in, you can see what I was talking about, where we're cutting back that material and then where that leg is going to st start protruding from the rest of the body. What I like to do is do this on both sides and then start rounding over. I, I round over a little bit around the eye just because you have to in order to get sanded down in there. But I like to take that material all the way back to where we want it and then start rounding over this corner right here. Same with the bottom. What we'll do is uh, you, you want this entire bottom to be round because if this thing was square and hit the water on one side and it's square, then it's not gonna wanna flip back over. Uh, so it's really important, you can see on this one, there's no square edges, it's almost a complete circle all the way around, of course, with the shape of the frog carved into it. Uh, but it's completely round. That's what we're gonna be going for. That's what I'm gonna do on this one. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bring this side in just a little bit more and then do the same thing on both sides that way get all that material knocked back and then we can start rounding it over. So here you can really see where it's starting to take that round shape I was talking about. All this flat spot in the middle is still our original wood that we took down with the belt sander. And what I'm going to do is, is slowly keep taking this material back until both of these two sides meet, going in from both sides, if that's uh, making any sense at all. There's some little arrows. But yeah, taking it in both sides until we get those joints to meet, that way on the bottom It'll be nice and round, there'll be no flat spots. We're basically going to be doing the same thing uh, where these legs are too. But we want those legs to protrude for details, that way it looks cool. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with the Dremel and start kind of cleaning this out a little bit. And you can still see where that line is. And kind of take that down, that way here it'll be completely flat. Or it'll go all the way into the rest of the body. And then we'll start carving the same thing back on this top, start carving the material back. A lot of toads or frogs have those little bumps right behind their eyes back there. And you can kind of see how we've got that going in right there. I'm just going to take the Dremel at an angle right there and carve it back. I'll show you guys on the video, it would make way more sense than what I could explain it. But she's starting to look a little bit like a frog. The other thing I'm going to be doing is Dremeling out between the eyes. I'll be running those over, um, but you will see all of that in the video. I just thought this would be a good stopping point to show how it's starting to get that round profile on the belly. Everything's still in the rough, but what I'm gonna start doing now is just like we took this material back earlier, I'm gonna do the same thing on the eye. Now I'll probably have to drill out some more of the eyes again once I do this, but I don't want them just to be completely straight on the side. I want them to kind of have a little bit of curving back to them. So we're going to take back all of this material right here 
where that's colored in, we're gonna take that away on both sides. That way it'll have a nice curve from side to side. Uh, and then, like I said, we might have to drill out a little bit more of the eyes once I do that, or maybe have them drilled at an angle. And then after that, I'm gonna just keep rounding over a couple more spots, and then we will whip out uh, the, some sandpaper and start doing some hand sanding. We also just have this little bitty line left on the bottom that's still uh, originally the flat wood. But uh, once we hand sand, that will be bringing it up most of the way. So we are to the point of ready to do some hand sanding. A lot of times whenever I'm working on a bait, I'll start hand sanding and then notice a spot that I need to dremel down some more. Uh, it's just kind of a, you don't really notice it until you get in there doing the final sanding on it. One thing I haven't tried yet that I really wanna try on uh, one of these frogs is instead of having it where it just jumps along the surface, carve some of this out to make it like a popper frog. So I might try that on another build or if any of you guys download this pattern, if you want to give that a try, let me know how it goes. But I'm going to go ahead and start doing some hand sanding. I have got a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. Whenever I'm hand sanding these, I'll also do some shaping on the eyes with it. So I've got, uh, what I say, 120 grit sandpaper. So what I'll do is just kind of round over those edges of course a lot more than what I'm doing right here uh, but that'll help give it the whole profile of the eye nice make the whole thing nice and round kind of like it's a ball sticking off there and once the eyes go in we'll get that uh, same effect you can kind of see it right there and then we're going to do uh, a little bit of hand carving with a zacto knife to make the mouth and then drill some holes for some weight There, I finally got it cleaned up a little bit. I think my problem was is I don't normally carve it that far away from myself. I was having trouble doing it with the camera there too, but got it cleaned up nice and good. So we are ready to put the hook inside of the lure. Now on this first one, what I did was I took a hook like this one and I cut off this front part here and then put the glued the hook inside there and then glued in a different eyelet to tie to. And I figured that's not going nowhere and it shouldn't break, but if anything were to break on that, it would either be the glue joint or this hook not being in there properly. So what I did on another lure, I actually gave it to a friend of mine, so I don't have it here to show you guys. But I got a, uh, a longer hook like this one and was able to make it where it was all one piece, which I think is better because then all the weight that goes on this hook when that fish bites it is going to be as strong as the hook is. You're not really pulling any weight uh, within the wood itself. So I went to the store and I bought some straight hooks, which I thought was perfect. My only problem was I didn't buy them quite big enough. So if you had this eyelet coming out the front like that, your hook's going to be right in the middle, which I think would still work. I like the idea of having the hook all the way at the back end. So I was going to go to the store and buy some bigger hooks. I think this one is a size four. No, I'm sorry. This is a size five. Uh, I was going to go to the store and buy some bigger hooks, but I was like, well, with uh, all the craziness going on in the world right now, you might live in a state where you can't get out or can't go to a store, or maybe you're younger and you can't drive yourself to a store. So I want to build this bait, put the hook in based on what we have to work with. And so what I did, instead of cutting this off and trying to, or trying to just bend it, because bending uh, metal like this, it's going to cause it to snap. So all I did was heat up the metal with a little blowtorch and was able to straighten it out. And that bad boy is strong. It's not going to go nowhere. I think you'd have to catch a shark before that's going to break. So now we got one long enough where the hook's still going to be closer to the back and we'll be able to get our eyelet sticking out the front. And it's all one piece, so I don't have to worry about anything breaking. I will, in the future, buy hooks long enough. So I'd recommend, if this is a size 5, maybe a 6 or a 7 in order to get it to be long enough to go all the way through the bait. Now this is where it can be also left up to you guys. 
maybe you want the hook sticking all the way out the back, kind of like the old head and rats, or maybe you just be fine with it right in the middle. I like the idea of it being a little bit lower in the back, that way if the fish hits it, it'll be there. Another idea I want to try is having two hooks, just like the normal plastic baits that you see, having two hooks coming out of it. So for, for this one, this is what we have to work with. All I did was heat it up and straighten her out. This is the hook that we're going to be using for this build. So this part is going to make a lot of you guys cringe, but we got to be able to get away to get this hook inside there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the saw and cut a straight line until I get deep enough to where I like how high up the hook is. I have seen people on YouTube where they're making these out of cork, where they'll like drill a hole in. I just kind of like the idea of it going straight down and then gluing some more wood in on top of it. So really if you wanted to you could make this frog in two different pieces and then glue it all together. Uh, I just like this method better. But there you're starting to get the idea of what's going about to take place. Be smart. I don't uh, I always forget to do this until I poke myself once. And I'm like, oh yeah. There we go, that'll at least make it hurt a little bit less. All right, I just filled with it a little bit more off camera and got her sitting down in there just like I wanted to. The next thing I'm going to do is drill the hole in the bottom to add some lead weight to make sure. Drop test. I always wanna make sure you do a drop test with your lures. I'm gonna drill the hole in the bottom to add in some weight to make sure whenever it hits the water, if it hits sideways, that it's gonna float back like that. Now on these first baits, I had mentioned at the very beginning of the video, that I wanted to add in a little bit more weight. On this bait, I did a quarter inch hole in the bottom, and I think it needs just a little bit more weight than that. So we're gonna go ahead and do a 3 8 hole, again, using the Forstner bit from that same kit uh, from Harbor Freight. And then on the pattern, I don't know if you can really tell uh, just by looking at it, but where this black hole or the black square is, is where I'm gonna be adding that weight. And that's just on the back side of the center of the bait. That way, whenever it's sitting in the water and you jerk it with your rod, it's not going to go nose down. It's gonna kind of sit like that in the water. That way, when you pop it or jerk it, it'll make sure that the front end is able to come up out of the water. I always like to drill a little bit deeper than the amount of weight I'm gonna put in there. That way we can that way we can use some wood filler or some baking soda and super glue to fill in at that surface. But this bad boy is ready for some lead weight in there. Now I'm using a lead melting pot. And if you don't have one of those, don't worry. You can always use any sort of weight that you can get. I used to use like the little split shot sinkers and just crush them with a pair of pliers and put them into the hole. Got the lead weight poured in there and this is doing exactly what I was hoping it was going to do. You can see with this one, you set it on its side, it's not really rolling over all the way. And again, in water, it's gonna make a big difference than on a flat desk. But this one, you set it on its side and it goes belly down, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Next step, we're gonna epoxy this bad boy, the hook into place and fill in that top part and she is almost ready for paint. So I used the JB Weld Clear, it's a five minute epoxy and it's a two part epoxy. So I mixed it up first in an old lid and then I made sure to put as much as possible inside of the bait. And I also spread some on the hook before putting it in there and then again I spread some more on the wood before putting it in there. Now this next part, I don't know a very good do it yourself at home unless you have this tool. I'm using a skirt tool in order to apply the bands onto the skirt. Uh, one thing that you could do is maybe steal it from an old frog that might be broken or messed up, or you might be able to use some sort of ribbon from a craft store or something like that. So 
So one of the last things we're going to do to this bait is use some baking soda and super glue in order to fill in that hole at the bottom. Now it hardens extremely fast, which is perfect whenever you're trying to work on a bait quickly like this. Other things that you could use is wood filler or you could even just mix some sawdust and wood glue together and make a putty that will that, that you could put in there. I like this method because it dries quick and is extremely durable. One of the last things I'm going to do for the skirt material is cut them to size and then I need to dremel out some holes for them. Now you can use a drill bit for this. The drill bits that I have that are the same size as this are extremely aggressive. So last time I tried using them I ended up tearing up the back half of the bait. So I just prefer to use the dremel tool. We've got the bait all ready for paint. I will be doing that in the next video, so if you're an early bird, you'll have to wait till tomorrow before you can see that. I have not glued in the little feet yet. I wanna make sure I get the paint and clear coat on there beforehand. If you guys do download this pattern and make your own frog, I'd love to see how it turned out, or if you make modifications to the pattern of your own, I'd love to see that. So make sure you post them on the Tackling the Dream group on Facebook. I'll have that linked below. As I said just a second ago, I will be doing another video on painting the frog, and I'll probably do a couple other frog patterns at some point or another. And I'm really hoping this week I can take this frog out and do a fishing video and catch some fish on it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to tackle your dreams.